one human family and the hurt of one is the hurt of all and the honor of one is the honor of all. And that is the primary message that I believe we need to wake up to, the reality. Because until we do that, we're separate, but we're really one. We're awakening to that spiritual reality right as we speak, everywhere, all at once, on Mother Earth. Please watch on for our multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet, Prophecy of the Golden Age, Part 68, Native American Prophecies, with Chief Phil Lane, Jr. Greetings, kind viewers. I'm Cedar, the Forest Spirit. The good-hearted Native American people thank you for respecting our Mother Earth. Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed, their words obscured. But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. The Honorable Hereditary Chief Phil Lane Jr. is a member of the Ihang Tanwan, Dakota, and Chickasaw Nations. He was formally recognized by elders from across North America as a hereditary chief, owing to his noble lineage of leadership and longtime service to indigenous peoples and greater humanity. In 1982, he founded the Four Worlds International Institute, or FWII which has become an international leader in the holistic development of indigenous communities. With master's degrees in education and public administration, Chief Lane also served as a university professor and government consultant, among other distinguished positions. He has also produced and or was featured in award-winning documentaries. For his tireless contributions, Chief Lane has received many awards such as the Windstar Award and the Swiss Foundation for Freedom and Human Rights International Award. Today, we are honored to introduce the Honorable Chief Phil Lane Jr., who will share some of the Native American prophecies giving great hope for our world's future. Prophecy of the Reunion of the Condor and the Eagle Many people know it by the reunion the condor and the eagle. The condor are the relatives to the south, South America, and to the north of the eagle. I traveled 
to Bolivia in 1970 because of this prophecy, because of my faith in this prophecy. And there I had the opportunity to meet many wonderful Quechua and Amara teachers, elders. And I had heard and knew about the prophecies on the eagle side. And I'd heard about it, but they began to explain and enhance more understanding. And so it's actually the reunion of the condor, the Quetzal, that's the Central America, and the eagle. What most people don't understand is, is prior to the arrival of Columbus, we had an incredible civilization across the Americas. And so our prophecies prior to 1492, across the Americas, and, and explained in different ways, essentially said this, a great spiritual winter time is coming. And this great spiritual winter time will last for 500 years, about 500 years. And during this time, you will go through tremendous tests and difficulties as, as other members of the human family. But if you keep having faith, if you keep praying, then not only will you emerge from that winter time when the, when the spiritual springtime comes, you'll emerge stronger than ever. And so this, this prophecy, in fact, was, as you know, it happened, the winter time came. And so we knew in 1992 would be a huge turning point, but there were signs on the way. One of the prophecies says, when the time comes to begin to arise, you shall see an eagle fly to the moon and land. And of course, 1969, the spaceship called the Eagle landed on the moon. And the very first words transmitted to Mother Earth to the human family was, the eagle has landed. So we knew our time had come. The winter time was over. The time of preparation had been finished and we were ready to begin to arise. According to the prophecy, the eagle and the condor would come together and fly in the same sky. This means that people across the Americas would join efforts to bring about a great era of peace, justice, and prosperity affecting all members of the human family. In particular, the indigenous people and supporting allies would play a leading role in this spiritual movement. Fulfilling the prophecy since the early 1990s, interest in Native American teachings has increased and the indigenous people have become more open to sharing their wisdom. Many constructive meetings and unified actions have been taking place all over the globe for various causes, such as reconciliation, human rights, and climate change. So as we're beginning to unify now, stronger and stronger, and you must have heard of the Standing Rock, where we stood up at Standing Rock against that uh, pipeline, where they had all these thousands and thousands of people, all these tribes, the biggest, you know, well, that was just the beginning that brought many tribes, many nations, many human beings together because they knew it was, we're destroying Mother Earth. And so what we see unfolding is a fulfillment within what we're doing, that we're bringing back the natural laws and we're finding others who also understand that this universe we live in is organized according to certain natural laws or guiding principles these first principles of life. In 1975, I traveled down to a place called Sweat House Lodge. The Sweat Lodge is one of our ceremonies for purification. And there was two elders down there. Eddie Bellrose is a Cree, he's passed on, beloved man, and Abe Bernstick. And all the time they were sharing all these prophecies, and I've seen them all come true. And one of the things he said to us, he said, someday you young men will see the everywhere spirit made physically manifest on the earth. And when that day comes, you will be able to look right in the eyes of another person. And they'll be able to look at your eyes, even though you're completely different parts of Mother Earth, and you'll be able to communicate with each other. And then he began describing every detail of the emergence of the internet and all these new technologies they're now enabling us to communicate broadly. 
So all these circles are coming together, just like Black Hell prophesied. All these circles are coming together, that everywhere Spirit's helping us. Harmonious viewers, we'll return after a brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Understanding viewers, welcome back to our program. We now continue our interview with Hereditary Chief Phil Lane Jr. about some of the major Native American prophecies being fulfilled today. Black Elk's Vision One of our great, great visionaries' name is Hehakasapa, Black Elk. And there's a beautiful book that's been translated to many languages called Black Elk Speaks, in which he gives these great prophecies, these great visions that were given to him or shared. What he sees is where we came to in our deepest, darkest days as indigenous people, where we were almost completely devoid of any hope. But then he says, and we came to the highest mountain of all. But with all their effort, they climbed to the first level. They felt stronger. They climbed to the second level. They felt stronger even more. And to the third level, even stronger more. Until finally, Black Elk said, and I found myself standing on the highest mountain of all. And I looked down below, and I saw the sacred hoop of my people the sacred circle of my people was a hoop of many hoops, a circle of many circles. And in the center stood a mighty flowering tree overshadowing the children of one father and one mother. And he says something so beautiful. I'm sure any spiritual wayfarer will understand what he said. And he said, I saw more than I could understand, and I understood more than I could say, for I was seeing the shapes of all things as they should live together in harmony and unity. As Black Elk's prophecy continues, we find a vision not only of peaceful harmony, but also a promise of receiving the key of enlightenment. And then I turned to the east, and two men were coming, and between them rose a daybreak star, with four blossoms, red, yellow, black, and white. And they said, with this herb of understanding, you shall have power over all things and I took it and dropped it upon the earth and where it fell there was no more darkness so that sacred prophecy has played a huge part in my life as Chief Lane has pointed out to others before the oneness of humanity has been recognized by modern science, anthropology, genetics, etc. Clearly recognize that there is only one human race. Scientists have found that all people on Earth share a common ancestor from only 3,400 years ago and that all human beings are 99.9% .9 identical in their genetic makeup. This supports the native teachings that we all originally came from one father and one mother that we're all one human family and the herd of one is a herd of all 
and the honor of one is the honor of all. And that is the primary message that I believe we need to wake up to, the reality. Because until we are, do that, we are, we're, we're separate, but we're really one. We're awakening to that spiritual reality right as we speak, everywhere, all at once, on Mother Earth. Another prophecy that's so important is that at this time, that we would meet other human beings from everywhere in the four directions. And together, we would come together in a good way, in a principle-centered manner. And we'd come together, and there would be world peace. And that is where we're moving towards. Sharing this vision of a united, peaceful global family, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for decades has been encouraging friendship among people of all cultures through many ways, from her attire and interactions while traveling the world, guidance of Supreme Master Television's multicultural programming. To her welcoming of the diverse ethnicities represented at our association gatherings and so on. I'm so happy to see you. Black, white, yellow, and red, whatever. <laughs> It is an illusion that we are many. After enlightenment, you see, we are all one. There's only one spirit, one unity, one great being in all of us. We are all one. You want to see what God looks like? Okay, you look at your behind, your front, your neighbor, right and left. That's what God looks like. <laughs> Each one of us house God inside. So treat each other as God, and you will see how much different life made day after day. Rich people, poor people, we all one. When your finger get hurt, your body feel hurt too. Peace come when we elevate all the whole world consciousness. So don't point finger at this and that leader or this and that group. The whole world shared happiness and sorrow all together. I mean, we are all 
to be blamed and we are all to be cherished. We are all to be respected and we are all to be loved. We all share this home together. Thank you, noble viewers, for joining us today. Please tune in again next week for more Native American insights of the future with the respected Chief Phil Lane Jr.